Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be trying to install yet another GPU in the $5 Windows 98 PC. Now, this is a project I've been wanting to do for a while. I've mentioned it in many videos on this channel. And back in January, I actually had a viewer send out this GPU right here, this FX5200. And I was really excited because it was like, yes, we can finally install a GPU in this thing and try to install Windows Vista on it again and get error working. That's kind of what I wanted to do. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted to get a more powerful or just a dedicated GPU because this computer has been running on integrated graphics ever since I got it. But unfortunately, despite the many things I tried in that video to get this card working, we came to the unfortunate determination that this card got damaged during shipping because no matter what I tried, I was not able to get this thing working. So it has been sitting in my hardware bin ever since possibly to be used for parts for a future video who knows but we're gonna try this again today this is like part two of that video or the second attempt here because i had a viewer who goes by the name through my four eyes offer to send out another fx 5200 and that's what's inside this box right here so yeah let's just open this thing up guys and let's take a look at what we've got inside which is obviously going to be the card itself but he also included the driver disk as well, which is definitely going to come in handy. The 98 PC is currently running Windows 98, very fitting, right? So we're going to try to install this card and use it within Windows 98. Then we're also going to upgrade the machine back to Windows Vista, which it was running at one point. I think around this time last year, actually, I did that video. And we're going to try to use this card within Windows Vista to see if we can run Arrow visual effects. And here we go. Check it out, guys. GeForce FX 5200 DDR 256 megabyte PCI. Pretty awesome. Now, he told me to try the drivers on the CD within Windows 98 first to see if they work. So we're going to try that out. But first, obviously, we have to get the card installed. So let's do that, shall we? All right. So we've got the 98 PC opened up here. We've got that one free PCI slot. And it's going to work just fine for the GPU. So let's slide it on in, shall we? And that's in, my friends. Now we just got to take the screw here and tighten it down. There we go, simple as that. Well, we're off to a much better start than we were with the previous card, so let's uh, log in here, and it's going to build a driver information database for the new hardware that it found. And this will be the perfect time to put in the CD. So it's found standard PCI graphics adapter, that sounds good to me, search for the best driver, yes. And we're going to search on the CD-ROM and not on the floppy disk drive. Oh, it just pulled it from C Windows. Okay, that works. There's probably a setup file on this disk that we have to, you know, run to actually install. So if it finish and it's going to ask us to restart, we will do just that. And there we go. Isn't it glorious? And Norton is letting us know that our virus protection is 7,700 days old. Yeah, that might be slightly out of date there. We'll just uh, do not notify me again. Yeah, this is the version of Norton that comes included with the restore disk that came with this computer. So that's why I have it installed here. So let's go into device manager here just to see what we've got. So we'll go to device manager and under display adapters, you can see we've got both the chipset graphics driver here as well as the standard PCI graphics adapter, which is the driver that it has currently loaded um, for the card that's in the machine. So we should be able to go to my computer and launch the setup wizard from here. See if there's an auto run or anything. Yes, there is. Super low resolution color mode here where everything doesn't really display properly, but that doesn't matter. So we're going to install drivers. And here we go, NVIDIA Windows 9598ME setup. This is the exact same setup wizard. Well, yeah, that obviously would make sense. This is the same card after all, just with a different uh, manufacturer. Oh boy, an error occurred while launching the setup. I wonder why that is. Well, we've got the driver files on the CD, so we may be able just to go into Device Manager and install them manually. I'm gonna go to Driver, Update Driver, and we'll just manually select the one on the disk. So we'll do uh, Recommended, Specify a Location, Drivers, Win98, this folder here and press OK. OK, so it found it. There we go. NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200. 
perfect. So it's currently copying everything, looks good. And yes, this happens with this wizard. If you saw when we did the driver installation the first time, I just selected CD and I hit next. Well, you have to manually specify the folder that's on the CD. I believe just selecting CD will search the root of the CD. A file being copied is older than the file currently on your computer. So yes, we'll keep the existing file. Perfect. Windows has finished installing an updated driver for your hardware device. And we're going to not restart because I do want to show you one more thing. So we'll close out of that. And now you see it says NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 in here as opposed to the standard PCI driver that it said before. So we're going to say no once again, because if you noticed on the disk here, there is a Vista X64 folder and a Vista folder, even Windows XP 64 bit edition or X60 or Windows XP professional X64 edition because they are different. I'm planning on doing a video on that. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But yeah, we've got Vista drivers on here. So and we got two versions, it looks like. So that means we'll be able to use this disk when we upgrade this machine to Windows Vista. Oh my gosh, is that beautiful or what? There it is, obviously. We saw this before, GeForce FX 5200. It works, my friends. I can't believe it. We had, I mean, we had that tiny little issue with the installer, but that was it. I am amazed. I am honestly incredibly surprised. So... There we go. So now we can move on to what I initially wanted to cover in the original video, and that is upgrading this machine to Windows Vista, installing the driver under that operating system, and seeing if this machine can handle Windows Aero. Now, I'm not going to record that entire installation process because I've already done it. You can check it out in this video up in the cards if you really want to see it. So the next time you guys see this monitor, this machine will be running Windows Vista. <laughs> well, I guess that didn't last long. So you can see that we get to this beautiful error message. Windows cannot copy files required for installation. The files may be corrupt or missing. 0x800 717. So I looked this up and it can relate to the installation media being corrupted. So I do have a DVD copy of Windows Vista, and there goes my phone. Um, but to use that, I need to put a DVD drive in this computer because it has a CD drive. And this is something I've talked about many, many times on this channel. Getting a DVD drive for the 98 PC has uh, been on my bucket list. And I got one, and then I have told this story many times, it's been on the fritz, it's not functioning properly. So I finally picked one up. It's actually one that I had in storage for the longest time and completely forgot about. Well, here it is right here. The only problem is you can see the, the color doesn't match. So I'm gonna see if I can take off this front plate here and put it onto here. Obviously, you know, they are the same size. So I'm gonna try to possibly work with that but this is a very accurate depiction of how like most of the videos on my channel go because we always run into something so if you're new here this is the kind of stuff that we run into all the time we go down these rabbit holes of like oh this didn't work so let me do this and we end up just trying a bunch of different things and that's literally what happened in the original gpu video but this one hopefully should be a simple fix so we've got the old drive right here the cd drive and we're going to pop in the DVD drive, which was actually in this computer at one point, many years ago when I first got it. This was one of the first things I did was I put this DVD drive in it, but I ended up taking it out because, you know, it doesn't match with the, with the front and I would rather have one that is beige. Well, it gets power. That's a good sign. And there's a disc in here. What? There's nothing on it. There's no writing at all, but okay. That's literally been in here for years. Because the last time this drive was used, it was, I want to say, like, 2016, maybe 2017. I'm going to take a guess that this probably had... Because the last video I did in 2016 with a 98 PC that didn't involve a CD, I think was the pushing the $5.98 98 PC to its limits, where I used those all-in-one Windows DVDs that have, like, 
multiple versions of Windows on one DVD, I've used those. Now I have those CDs made and labeled, so this is not one of them, but in that video, if I remember correctly, I ended up using a separate copy of, well, because the discs didn't have Vista or 7 on them, so this could be Windows Vista or Windows 7. Let me go verify it. First things first though, let's start the Windows Vista installation process. So obviously the nice thing about this is we're not gonna have to swap between CDs like I was doing. I mean, you guys didn't see any of that. And we're gonna agree to the license terms, obviously read all of those very, very carefully. So we're going to just delete the partition and once it does that we'll make a new partition there we go disk zero partition one beautiful copying windows files isn't that wonderful so yeah we'll let it uh, do its thing and hopefully we'll be able to finish the installation this time let's hope for the best and for those wondering here is the disk right here that i pulled out of the drive that's now in the 98 pc we've got our trusty dell latitude d610 right here let us see what is on it? Calibri OS, what is this? I honestly cannot remember when I made this. But yeah, Calibri OS is a small open source x86 operating system. Here's the Wikipedia page right here. Um, <laughs> I, I literally don't know. I mean, I assume I was planning on doing a video on this on the 98 PC at some point. It must have been a video suggestion or something. Gosh, I can't even remember like when I made this. Well, hey, if you guys wanna see a video on Calibri OS, let me know in the comments, I guess. I mean, if you want me to do a video on this and I can say it's been like four years in the making or five, five years, gosh, it's been five years since 2016. I could say it's been five years in the making because I made this disc like in 2016. Gosh, that is crazy. But this looks to be getting farther than uh, we were with the CD version. We've, you know, it's already copied all the files over. It's currently expanding them right now. It's about 32% done. Yep. And uh, yeah, so this, this is looking promising, but we'll just keep our hopes up and hopefully, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to get Vista installed on this thing. I mean, we got it installed on it before, so I know it works, but um, yeah, we run into these, like I said, little, little issues from time to time. More often than not, usually, it always seems like something goes wrong. But hey, that just adds to the fun of these videos. So yeah, I'll be back when something interesting happens. And we're back, and check this out. We've got a pretty good resolution going here. We're going to type in for the username, we'll do 98 PC. 98 PC PC. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. 98 PC PC. Use recommended settings, that's fine. We'll leave it in Pacific time for now and start. We're gonna try to swap the front plate on these drives right here. So we've already taken off the front plate for the CD drive and it does need to be cleaned here. This one here has these tabs on the top that go to this right here. You got these like tabs here that they kind of latch into. This one here doesn't have that. These tabs on the side, you can see you got one right here, you got one over here, and you got uh, one on the bottom here. So we're gonna try just to take this off and make this work. We do need to eject the drive though. So we'll push the little button here and this will come out. And then this should, should is the key word. At least it did this on the other one though. These are obviously gonna be manufactured a little bit different. There we go, that worked. So there, there is, uh, there it is, it's off. And so this piece comes off like that. And then this comes out. And let's just see if we can slide this on here. I mean, it's not gonna be an exact fit, but can we make it fit? That is the question. Actually, yeah, these plastic tabs here are prevented from getting in because there's a plastic piece right here. So that is not going to work. Though, I do have another idea. Let me grab the other DVD drive that is on the fritz. This one right here, which you guys have seen before if you've seen some of my older videos. I got this, I think, around this time last year. And it is beige, so it matches with 98 PC. And it looks to have a similar, you know, mechanism that this does here. I want to say these are manufactured by the same manufacturer, by the same company. I mean, the design of it on the top here is, like, identical. And look on the side. I think it's on this side here got those little seal stickers right they're in the exact same place on both of them this is like a one-to-one -one match honestly so this this could really work guys 
So let's just pop out this here. We'll do the same thing. Look at this. Look at that. That's a match. That is an exact match. This is totally going to work. I just need to get the, uh, the front plate off here. There we go. This one comes out. I'm not going to worry about swapping out this at the moment. I mean, we can do that if we really wanted to. But I think it's going to look cool. You're going to have like white on the front, black on the inside. So, okay, this will go on here. That works. Oh, man. Oh, the, <laughs> the only difference is you don't have like this one here has the uh, headphone jack. Now we've got this unnecessary hole for a headphone jack and the volume knob here. That's this down here, which I could honestly move these parts possible. Like, just put the part in here. I mean, it's obviously not going to be connected to anything, but I mean, it looks kind of funny. This is a random hole here. But now we can take this here and uh, just kind of slide this onto the front. There we go. I mean, I think that looks really cool. You got like an Oreo effect going on. We're going to roll with it, guys. There we go. So I'm going to pop this back into the 98 PC. It did finish installing Windows Vista. That's obviously how I was able to take out the, the drive here. Uh, because, you know, wouldn't want to do that while the machine was running, obviously. So yes, it did install successfully. And uh, so let's put this back into the 98 PC, turn it on, and see if we can get Windows Arrow working on this computer. All right, everybody, here we are logged into Windows Vista, finally. And you can see that, well, if I open up the start menu here, error glass transparency is not currently enabled, and that is because, you know, we don't have the driver loaded. So if we go to device manager here, uh, you'll see that it currently has a standard VGA, you know, generic driver loaded here. So we're going to go over to driver and update driver. I'm gonna put back in the CD right here. So we'll do that. It's spinning up, and here we go. Now we may actually be able just to run the setup program. Why don't we just do that? Graphics adapter installed in the system is not compatible with the current set of drivers. Okay, so I wonder if this is set to load like the, cause you know, when we were under Windows 98, it loaded the Windows 98 slash ME setup wizard or 9598 ME setup wizard. It was all in one. But there are Windows Vista drivers on the CD as we saw before, so. We're just going to browse my computer for driver software and we're just gonna ignore this, cancel. Let me pick a list of device drivers on my computer. Let's do this and this will have us, uh, okay, here we go, have disk. Okay, open. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, basically the same CD that we tried in the last video where it's got all these different drivers on here. So this is a GeForce FX 5200, which uh, doesn't appear to be in this list here. Oh no, is it down here? No, that's the Quadro FX. I think it's probably in the other folder here. Let's go back up one, go in here. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, GeForce FX 5200. There it is. Installing this device driver is not recommended because Windows cannot verify that it's compatible with your hardware. Okay, that's fine. Windows has successfully updated your driver software. Awesome, that is wonderful. Okay, driver provider NVIDIA, the name of the device has changed to NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200. So we should close, it should prompt us to restart. I heard the error sound come up. Uh, yes, restart. Oh boy, it seems to me the resolution has increased by a little bit. I mean, let's see if it even allows us to enable arrow. It is an option in here. By the way, this machine has 512 megabytes of RAM, if you were wondering, which that is not what it originally came with. And this is the maximum amount that this motherboard supports. So this is the moment of truth. Will it? Oh, yes, it does. Check that out, my friends. Windows Arrow on the 98 PC. It took us, I mean, I've had this thing for five years. I've never gotten around to doing this. Honestly, I mean, running Windows Arrow on 512 megabytes of RAM is not the greatest experience certainly like let's go to task manager here and see how how much system resources we're using 
go to performance here. So you can see like under memory, we are utilizing just with uh, this one window open and with task manager open, we're utilizing 334 megabytes of memory. You know, that's more than half of the, <laughs> of the RAM that we have. We'll just leave the task manager in the bottom right corner here so you can see the CPU and memory usage. But what I wanna do is open up, uh, we can do win key pause break to open up the system properties window here. We have a 1.3 Windows Experience Index, although it does say unrated, but we're gonna try to run Windows Experience Index and see um, what it rates this computer. And yes, this will take a few minutes, probably more than a few minutes, but yeah, check out the CPU graph down there. This definitely maxes out, it's at 100%. Memory still holding around 278 megabytes. You can see what the old score was and the way this works, if you're not familiar with Windows Experience Index, is it rates the, and this is this was a thing up until Windows 8, I believe. It was still available. I think it's still available in Windows 10. You can still run to like get your score, but it's not displayed anywhere in the system process properties window like it used to be, but this would essentially rate your system components. And then whatever your lowest score is becomes your overall system score. So you can see that our lowest score was the processor, which obviously will not change. So this is not going to change actually, but for graphics, hopefully that 2.9 will uh, increase a little bit, but the overall score will stay at 1.3 because nothing has changed with the processor. Well, actually none of the scores have changed. You can see that graphics is still 2.9. Gaming graphics is still 2.6 which makes sense because it was measuring the hardware, you know, the physical hardware in this computer. So that, that old score uh, did not change at all. The only thing we can still upgrade is the hard disk because the memory is maxed out, the processor is maxed out, on this current motherboard, unless I wanna upgrade the motherboard, which is a possibility. But I think it's about time we put an SSD in this thing, and that's gonna be a topic for another video. But yeah, be sure to let me know if you guys wanna see that. I know a lot of people go the CF card route with these old computers, and I think that would be really useful as well for like Windows 98. But I think uh, having an SSD, and actually, I'm gonna be getting some new SSDs for my main computer, and I'm gonna be taking one of the SSDs out of it, one of the smaller ones. I got like a 128 gig SSD that I use for my uh, temporary premier storage, like for my project files and stuff. I'm gonna be upgrading that to a larger drive. So I'm gonna have a 128 gig SSD that I think could work pretty well in the 98 PC, though I am going to have to get a IDE to SATA adapter because obviously the SSD uses SATA as opposed to IDE. So we're gonna have to get one of those adapters, but that'll be a whole topic for another video, but but as for now, guys, I'm going to call this video an absolute success in my book. This is awesome. Windows Arrow is running here on the 98 PC, and it is it is super glorious, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below. Turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.